It's Beer Thursday! Woo! We're at the LA Beer Week's final festival at the Union Station. It's crazy. There's a lot of breweries here, a lot of great craft beer lovers that have come out. We're going to be interviewing with some of the brewers, some of the people that are out here, a couple of the food trucks. Uh, it's a great time. We're going to have a blast. Come on and let's go. We're here with Dennis Hartman, who's one of the uh, organizers of LA Beer Week as a whole, and this uh, fantastic party that's happening. This is the second annual? Second annual. We uh, moved from Descanso Gardens last year, wanted to incorporate public transportation into the venue, open it up and give people really an iconic place in Los Angeles to celebrate beer. Yeah, uh, public transit in LA is very difficult, so this is probably the one place in all of LA that you can definitely get to via public transit. So. Yeah, you actually could get here from LAX on the flyaway bus, you can get here on the light rail, the gold line, blue line, red line, the big commuter buses come here, trains come, so it really does work well, so we're real glad to be here. Now, this is the last day of uh, Beer Week, so what was uh, your personal favorite event this week? You know, it was really a mixed bag. We did a lot of educational things. Uh, Micromatic came out, did a seminar to train a lot of bar staff on how to work their draft equipment, how to maximize it. But the Nausea's event that opened up was Stone. You know, last year we had four or 500 people attend it. This year, as in all our events, it was three or four times that many people. Really well attended, an incredible job by Stone. They brought all their beer. Biggest pour, I think, in California for Stone at one pot. Yeah, you get the uh, 040404, the 050505. They had a ton of their really super rare verticals there, and it was just a packed house. It was crazy in that place that night. So, but it's it was a, been a great week. It's nice to see LA is starting to really get into the craft beer movement and get the get the love of beer going. And uh, what do you expect for next year? Well, I think next year you're going to see more and more of the small startup breweries starting to get their opportunity. This is a great vehicle to get them exposed and. Uh, my history is 20 years ago, I brought the first brew pub to Southern California, a little place called Crown City Brewery in Pasadena, and there was no one doing it. And now if you walk around in here, we have 15 Los Angeles County breweries functioning. I'm sure that number will triple by next year. Right on, right on. Well, I can't wait for next year, and thank you for taking some time with us, and enjoy the event. Enjoy it. Get in here and enjoy some of this great beer. We're here with Jeremy Robb. He's the uh, head brewer. Founder, owner, head janitor, head janitor, everything that is Eagle Rock Brewery, and uh, so how you guys liking the event this week? It's awesome. It's uh, really cool to see this many people excited about beer in LA. It's really cool to have it at this awesome historic location, and it's 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 just great to have this many like-minded people together excited about beer. It's it's pretty great. Yeah. Now you guys are uh, are kind of billed as the first brewery back in the LA proper area is that correct uh, yeah I guess to get technical the first in the city of LA craftsman's been around for uh, like over 15 years in Pasadena um, and there's been a few brew pubs in the city of Los Angeles previously but the first production microbrewery in the city of Los Angeles so yeah it's good to see you guys leading the charge kind of bringing craft beer back to LA it's uh, you know a lot of the LA people feel like they have to drive down to San Diego or even up yeah. to San Francisco and uh, you know, even last year's Beer Week was supported mostly by San Diego beer breweries, so it's great to see you guys here. Yeah, I totally agree, and it, it was weird to see all those San Diego breweries here. It was great, of course, because it's great beer, but it was a shame to not have more local showing, but just the fact that there wasn't that many local breweries. And now, a year later, you know, we're, we've been around 11 months, Nibblebit Tabby right next to us, they've been around for about three months now. Um, there's a lot more kind of breweries and planning in LA, so it's it's really starting to change. And also, it's been great to see in our in our tasting room, we get people coming up from San Diego just to say, "Hey, we came up to LA to try your your beer this weekend." So it's like, wow, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So tell me a little bit about what I'm drinking. Unity, which is a beer that you brewed for this event specifically. Yeah, and we we plan to brew it for this event specifically, and we invited all of the kind of local LA beer bars uh, to come in and help us brew it. So we had probably about 12 people or so in the brew house that day. We brewed it on Labor Day, which was kind of <laughs> apropos. And uh, we all decided together what style of beer to do. And we thought that this style was appropriate because, you know, a California Common um, is a native California beer. And uh, 
and also being a you know a steam beer by another name, um, being that it's in Union Station, that kind of seemed appropriate as well. So just kind of a, a fun you know nod to the hat to the history of, of good beer in California. So right on. Well, we're looking forward to seeing great things come from you guys, and uh, hopefully one of these days we can get out to your brewery and do a do a proper show for you guys. Yeah, please do come out anytime. <laughs> We're here with uh, Rich. He's the owner of Strand Brewing Company. Yeah, co-owner. Yeah, co-owner. Co yeah. And um, talk a little bit about Strand and what you guys have been doing and what you got on the, the horizon. Well, actually, this day's a um, really, really great day for us at Strand. Um, I, we started out one year ago today. Actually, we tapped our first keg at Naja's in Redondo Beach. Oh, that's uh, crazy. Yeah, and we, we that was Happy the first. Anniversary. Thank you, thank you, yeah. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? See? No, I did not. So it was, it was the first day that anyone had ever tried our beer outside of our friends and family, and, and we ended up selling uh, three full kegs in seven or eight hours at Naja's wow. that night. And that kind of was a catalyst for, hey, maybe we're onto something here, maybe we aren't crazy. So it's been a really wild, fun, and humbling year. I have to say, it's, it's a very humbling thing to put your passion and, and something that you create, make, and want to share with people out there. And it's definitely bigger than, than we are, for sure. Right on. Well, you guys are doing something right because I know in the last year, I've had about six different bar owners, homebrew shop owners, and people who drink beer tell me, like, you need to get up to Strand and do a show at Strand, and they're doing great things. And so you're making a really huge impact in the L.A. scene and whatever. So that's, that's kudos to you guys for that. Thank How do you, you feel like the craft beer scene's growing in L.A.? I think it's growing in a, in, a, in a great direction. I mean, you know, I was in, actually, we poured at Ballast Point 14th anniversary in San Diego yesterday, and uh, people were walking up, kind of going, well, who are you? We've never heard of you before. And there was this kind of this, they wouldn't even put out their cup. They would kind of hold it back. So, you know, come on in. And by the time we left, they were saying, well, this is really good. And, well, it was great to see a brewery coming down from L.A. And I think that it's just going to kind of mushroom cloud out. But we had to start here first. I feel like, you know, with what Jeremy's doing in Eagle Rock, ourselves, few others, things that Market Craftsman has put into motion 16, 17 years ago. I think now it's starting to grow in that direction of it used to be, you know, you go to San Diego and you say, where's your local brewery? And they say, which one? Right. And here you say, where's your local brewery? And people say, we have one, <laughs> you know, kind of a question mark. And I think that that is going to be changing over the next few years. That's so. awesome. I can't wait for that because it's, it's so great to see LA busting at the seams and getting ready for that and and the crowd today really shows that we're ready we're, we're ready to do it well and also kudos to the people like uh, you know the Ryan Sweeney's and the and the Brian Lenzo's and Paige and Tony's and all the craft beer bars and owners that are really taking a step forward and saying hey I've never heard of you before and I realize that most of my patrons have never heard of you before but if you put out a good product we'll put you on and we'll give you a shot to compete and that's all I really wanted. I never said, you know, you have to put me on because I'm local. Put me on because we're a great beer. But if we're local too, then great. That's great for that's great for the city, right? Exactly. And I'm drinking the uh, 24th Street Pale Ale. That's our flagship ale. It's it's a fantastic beer. It's really well balanced. Uh, it's got a nice hop character, but it's not overpowering. So this is one this is one of my favorite pale ales that I've had. We had it at the Blue Palms anniversary as well on cast. We did. So it was it's fantastic. You guys are doing great things. Thank Thanks you. for taking some time and uh, enjoy your event. Uh, thank you so much. Really, it's a pleasure. <laughs> We're here with Aaron from Bootleggers Brewery in Fullerton. You guys have really started to make a name for yourself in the uh, local kind of the Fullerton, Placentia brewery area. Like you're, you're kind of everybody's first stop and then they head over to the brewery and it's like a great little like connection you guys have. But talk a little bit about what you guys have been doing recently. Uh, you know, we've, we've been busy expanding. We just added a new tank, added some more office space and uh, you know, we're... Uh, we're busy trying to meet demand. Right on, right on. One of my favorite beers that you guys make is Knuckle Sandwich. Knuckle Sandwich pretty much talks for itself. You know, it's <laughs> a, uh, you know, it's we dry hop it with about an ounce per gallon. Um, you know, it's dry hop with Simcoe, Nugget, and Columbus. And uh, you know, we just wanted to go really big with a double IPA and and uh, you know, do something different. Right on. It's a fantastic beer. You guys also have one called Black Phoenix, which is a, a Chipotle-infused porter. Is that right? Uh, it's actually a Chipotle coffee stout. Okay, Chipotle um, coffee yeah, stout. Yeah, that's, a, that's a really unique flavor profile for that beer. Yeah, we, we use fresh roasted coffee from Keen Coffee in Orange County. 
Um, so we get it super fresh within a couple of days of being roasted. And, uh, you know, it just, it really comes out in the flavor of the beer. You know, that with the chipotle peppers, I think it, it just really melds well together. Right on. Well, you guys, are, you guys have a lot of exciting things happening, and you have a great tasting room, and there's always a fantastic food truck out front. So uh, we're excited to see what you guys are going to do for the future, and thanks for talking to us, and enjoy the event. Awesome. Cheers. We're with David Watrous. He is the Goose Hound in L.A., and a very well-known guy all around the city. He does all kinds of events and sets up all these kind of things. He's, you're one of the key components for the L.A. Beer Week, especially this event. You guys did a fantastic job this year. Uh, the turnout is amazing, especially compared to last year. It was a little bit under under supported, and um, I think this really goes to show that the people of LA are ready for craft beer and they're ready to support it and get behind it. Talk a little bit about your week, what you've enjoyed the most. Um, I had a fantastic night at the Verdugo the other night with the Hot Knives. They did a pairing with a brewery that was really good. The greatest thing this year is that we had twice the amount of events that we did the year prior, um, three times the attendance for this event, and I think it just shows that not only are we here, you know, but we're all about craft beer in general, and that it's not just about, uh, you know, I mean, we're promoting, L no, LA and Orange County have kind of gotten a bad rap for a long time, and I'm sure everyone's been telling you that, but you know, you guys do a fantastic job on Uber Thursday at really covering the events, and people can't really ignore us anymore, which is, which is really great. The fact that we're able to get 75 plus breweries to come, um, to have over a thousand people come today, and just really, in general, we've had over 100 events this week, and just a huge growth over last year. So it's just, I'm really excited, and I think it shows that we're here to stay and that we really actually truly care about craft beer so I feel the same way because people are really excited about the breweries that are opening up in LA and um, Eagle Rocks really started like really quickly made a name for itself uh, Strand has been doing some really great stuff um, we're starting to see a lot of that like flair and that that excitement for craft beer again in LA and that's really exciting to be a part of and I can't wait to see how it like blows up next year and like I think this will be a sold-out event next year easily. No question and we're gonna try to get the city involved a little bit more than we did this year. I, The sky's the limit for next year so we're really excited about that and uh, I mean just in general this week's been fantastic like every night it was one of those things where you look at the calendar and you're like what do I do? Where to, do I go yeah next? and yeah. You, you know like it's nice to have that kind of a problem whereas you know, 10 years ago when I was involved in this, it was a lot harder. There were two or three places we could go, you know, and now it's, you know, everybody and their mom wants to open a, a gastro pub and start a, a, you know, and so it's nice to be able to really have places we can drink all the time where we know there's going to be good local California craft beer um, and that we can just have a good meal as well, which is nice too, you know. The main thing that we also did this year that we didn't last was to have, we have the food trucks, which obviously is kind of an LA staple now. Um, we have the Grilla Mall truck and Mandolin who were in the great food truck race. Um, but we also have Mignon Chocolatier here and we have uh, uh, Portolo Coffee and a wonderful uh, cheese table. Um, and we're doing a lot more with the food as well, which I think is, you know, is one of the new frontiers in craft beer as well. You can't have good craft beer without great food. So I, that's well, <laughs> maybe, maybe I should uh, not have as much craft beer. Exactly. With craft beer. I'm like, hence the problem that you see right here. <laughs> it's, it's it's market it's market research. <laughs> exactly. That's when I that's what I tell people at the bar. People are like, oh, well, what should I be drinking? I'm like, well, I, I definitely have lots of market research going on here. So. <laughs> Yeah. Right on. Well, thank you very much. Of course. Uh, this is a great event. We really appreciate you guys like setting this up and getting the craft beer movement rolling in LA. And that's it's fantastic. So cheers to you guys Absolutely. and have a great event. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Stephen. I appreciate it. So we're here with Ryan. He's the uh, co-founder and the main chef for the Grilla Mall Truck. You guys have got a whole new like lease on life with the the new fame you got from the great food truck race. Talk a little bit about how that's changed things. Uh, it's it's weird, man. I'm I'm used to uh, you know I'm used to being back of the truck with my head down cooking burgers and stuff like that and now you know I got employees and I mean it's 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 grown now exponentially. You're a millionaire with a house in Malibu and women <laughs> over there. <laughs> I got like 15 bucks in my bank account. <laughs> right on right on well um, we knew about you before all that because you guys stop at a lot of the breweries in the uh, Fullerton and, and Brea area and uh, I know you guys are uh, a staple at the Bootleggers Brewery, Absolutely. so uh, talk a little bit about craft beer and how you guys like to uh, mesh with that. Um, man, I mean, first, first and foremost, we're our raging, uh, no, we're, we're alcoholics. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> and uh, I was going to try to figure out a good way to put that, but no, no. 
We like to drink a lot, and um, we call that soberly challenged. There you go. Yeah, soberly challenged. I'm definitely soberly challenged at, at, at the moment as well, actually. But I mean, it's what a what a beautiful thing. You know, it's just like uh, peanut butter and jelly, burgers and beer and fries. It's the most beautiful thing ever. And for us to be able to go out to like Eagle Rock Brewery, to Bootleggers Brewery, um, to the brewery, to like all you know, Verdugo Bar, and be able to serve people food and like be able to actually indulge ourselves in their product um, it's awesome man I mean it, it's a really win-win situation for us because people uh, our burgers I think go really really well with beer so it's 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 kind of awesome and it, it's yeah it just works well we love you guys because you know we're big huge Metallica fans and so you know grill them all just it totally totally fucking rocks um, so we really love what you guys are doing and I know watching the show watching the food truck race watching some of those burgers you make was like, oh, I feel my arteries clogging up just watching it. So, but uh, they are phenomenal. They taste fantastic. And uh, so, if you're in the area and you know where the Gorilla Mall truck is, get out there and try them out. Now, now you have to stand in a longer line than you used to, but it's totally worth it. So, thanks, man. I appreciate that. It was really nice to meet you. Nice too, to meet man. you, and and have a good one and enjoy the festival. Hell man. yes! Right. Drink beer Woo! a lot and eat more. <laughs> Here with Porter from the Tustin Brewing Company. Uh, I'm drinking, uh, what is this called? Uh, that's our Portola Coffee Blonde. Uh, sort of giving homage to the roast master at Portola Coffee who helps me uh, make that beer. I've never had a beer that tastes this, that's this color that tastes so much like coffee. It, it's blowing my mind right now. Well, that was kind of the point. I mean, every time you see a coffee beer, it's dark, it's strong, it's stout, it's porter. And uh, I said, what happens if you put coffee in a light beer? So uh, Jeff over at Portola helped me figure out how to get coffee into a light beer, but without compromising the flavors of the beer itself. Well, this is this is amazing. I can't even like I when you when I saw the word coffee on there, I was like, oh, I'm gonna try that, and it came out this color. And I was like, oh, maybe they had that hooked up wrong. And <laughs> with that drag, I'm like, wow, it's so amazing. So yeah. congratulations on that. Of course, thank you. I think it achieves its goal. You know, it's it's a light beer, it's coffee, but it's balanced. You know, that's the whole point. So now, um, this is the second LA Beer Week, and Tustin's technically Orange County, but there's no there's no love for the Orange County Beer Week yet, so we're waiting on that. Um, how did you, how do you feel like this uh, this year's went over last year's? Uh, I think there was a lot more uh, higher quality events where people you just like I gotta go to this event, you know, like it's just I don't know what's it, like higher caliber, you know what I mean. Um, and so it just made it that much more enjoyable for the brewers, for the promoters, and for you know all the beer fans out there, especially in LA. I mean, you know, we get we we take a lot of crap for being the dead zone in between San Francisco and San Diego, and I think we're finally start to show our true colors up here. Right on, right on. So this has been a great event. We're happy to see you guys here supporting it, drinking some of your amazing beer. Cheers. If you haven't been to Tustin Brewing Company, you need to get down there because they're doing amazing things. Yeah. And so cheers to you guys and uh, enjoy the event. Thanks, man. You too. We're here with Nick. He's the uh, local account manager for Sam Adams here in the Southern California area. And uh, typically at an event like this, when you see Sam Adams, you assume to see like the Boston Lager, maybe the Light, whatever. But you got some interesting beers going on here. Tell us a little bit about the KMF and the Creek. Well, yeah, when I was approached about doing the event, you know, they said, obviously, we'd love to have you involved, but uh, the only stipulation is we want you to bring something a little different, a little out of the norm. So uh, I talked to our brewers, and I asked if they had anything around the brewery that they could send me, and they said, well, how about if we give you a couple slims of uh, the Barrel Room collection? And I said, well, that would be fantastic. Uh, the American Creek is one of three beers in our Barrel Room collection. Uh, we just started brewing these in 2009. Uh, they're all brewed and aged in oak uh, they were brandy barrels from Italy, and we actually, uh, they were dismantled in Portugal by Coopers. We shipped it all over to Boston, then the Coopers flew over and reassembled the barrels by hand in our brewery. And uh, so these beers are all going to, you're going to get that oak hint out of it, a uh, little bit of the brandy notes. And then what the KMF is, we call it Cosmic Mother Punk. And it's basically the soul of each of these barrel room beers. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty much a showcase for the yeast that we use to kind of give it that, uh, you know, the, the characteristics that you would get from a wild yeast with the uh, open fermentation process, but uh, obviously used in a more controlled environment. Right on. Yeah, I'm drinking that right now, and it's it's fantastic. It's really well balanced. It's, it you know, it's obviously a base beer, but it's a very good base beer. It's very drinkable base beer. And it's nice to see uh, Sam Adams kind of stepping into that and 
doing a lot of that because they're they're very well known for their lagers and their their very stylistic spot on beers. It's nice to see them jumping into this realm and getting a little creative with it. So. Exactly. Yeah. It's uh, our brewers are just they're constantly looking to do new things and you know constantly pitching ideas to Jim Cook and you know let's try this, let's try this, and uh, they're coming out with some really great stuff. This Barrel Room Collection is one fantastic example, and hopefully we keep it going. Yeah, Sam Adams is one of the, like the five godfathers of craft beer, so and they'll always have that. You know, no matter how big they get, they're always going to have that status. So much love and respect for you guys. Glad you guys came out. And uh, cheers. Enjoy your event. Thank you. We're here with Danny. He's the uh, co-founder of The Full Pint, one of the best beer news sites that you can find online. Uh, how are you enjoying the event? Man, I love it here. Yeah. It's beautiful, man. It's packed. And it's beer drinking weather, actually. Exactly, exactly. So this is, uh, it's nice and overcast. It's not misting, at least. That's a, that's a positive. What are you drinking? This is Sam Adams KMF. Uh, it's a funky base beer for their American Creek. What did you do this week? What, what events did you go to? Well, we, uh, we hit up the fairly new 38 Degrees over in Alhambra. Uh, we held a tasting there trying to educate people uh, on beer. Not the geeks, but the people that are brand new to craft beer. Uh, we held a little uh, cheese pairing over at Carl Strauss over at City Walk. Uh, we figured that would be an ideal place to find some noobs. <laughs> that, that's where we're hitting at. I mean, we figured the beer geeks already know about this stuff. Right. We're trying to recruit. Right on. Right on. That's excellent. So uh, this year, um, tons of events, quite a few more than even last year. Uh, next year, it's going to obviously grow again exponentially. Um, how, do you see, how do you see the L.A. scene growing? I mean, you got your finger on the pulse. You guys, you guys cover a lot of the L.A. stuff. So how do you see it growing? Well, um, right now, uh, number one, I think right now, Eagle Rock is uh, kicking ass, taking names. But uh, earlier this week, I blogged calling out aspiring brewers, come to L.A., make some good beer. We shouldn't have to drive to San Diego for a good glass of beer. Am I right? Amen to that, brother. Amen. So if you're out there watching uh, brewers, come to L.A. The weather's nice. The, beautiful, uh, the women are beautiful. We need good beer. Amen to that. Thanks a lot, man. Cheers.